What's going on guys? If you're a Durango owner and you've been wanting to put one of these badass X Loom illuminated badges on your grill like we did here, this is the exact video you're looking for. I'm gonna show you step by step how we installed this thing to include making it function to where it runs with both the accessory lights as you see right now and also when you turn on the headlights. This way instead you don't wanna have it running full time when the car is just on and you wanna be able to turn it on with both running lights and headlights. That's exactly how we wired this thing up. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we did it. All right, guys, so we wanted to wire this light up so it actually turned on when the headlights and the running lights were on, but was off when you had the lights off. So it kind of mirrored the same function of the headlights and wasn't on full time. If you wanted to do it that way, you could have easily powdered up, you know, with the 12 volts, the battery, but then again, it would even be on when the car was off. So then you'd have to find another source that was key on and we just didn't want to do that. We wanted to turn on with running lights, which will have the lower LEDs in the headlight going, and then also the amber side marker light. So to get to this point, I'll help fast forward you on what you got to do. Pull off your driver front tire. Once you've done that, there's that kind of felt inner wheel well lining, which you're going to have to pull off. In order to do that, you're going to get, you can do it a number of ways. Screwdrivers, you can do it. You'll kind of booger these up though. One of these fastener um, removal tools really makes it a lot easier. You get underneath it and you pry it out. So there's all these little fasteners that are holding in this felt wheel well liner. Get this guy out of your way. I took some tape, just kind of tied it up to move it out of the way so I could access the rear of the headlight. This is the backing to the headlight right here. And then you can see the wiring harness coming down, which actually has all of your main wiring, which sources to the headlight. But of which one of these, you know, 30 wires are the ones that you want. That's what we're discovering. So with the power probe, I was able to figure it out for you guys. And if you don't have one of these, I've got the shortcut answer to the exact wire you need to tap into. So when you get behind here, you'll see on the bottom of this part of the headlight housing, there's this white housing where this wiring harness I've already disconnected goes into. This is what's going to your amber um, light, which is gonna turn on with the accessory of the headlight for your running lights and also be on during operation of your full headlights, which is what we wanted. So if you guys want to do it the same way we're doing it, this is what you need to do. Pop off this little wiring clamp. So again, that's right here. You're going to get right there. Pop off this little wiring harness. There's a little tab that helps you get it off. I've already loosened it. And what you're going to do is look for the brown and white wire, or I should say the white wire with the brown center line of the casing. Let me zoom in. Okay, you see this white wire with the brown going down the center of it? This is the one that is actually gonna be powering both during your accessory um, running light function and your headlight function. There's another wire in this harness, which is on this side, that is gonna just power during the headlights and you don't want that. So you can see here, I've already gone with a Sharpie and marked it for you guys. Now I'm gonna have Alex go inside the car. Seriously, a mosquito just landed on my thumb. This bastard thinks he's gonna get me. Not tonight, Satan. All right, so we'll show you guys exactly what we're talking about. One of them will be powered on during both and the other one only one time. Okay guys, so here's that wiring harness that we were just talking about. Now with the power probe, again, if you don't have one of these at home, I'm giving you the shortcut to how you can get to that white with brown wire, but to just prove to you what I'm talking about. Here right now, as you guys saw, the power probe is connected to the battery. That's why the lights are on. When it contacts a wire that is not powered, you'll see it light up green and it'll have a dull tone like that. So these are all wires that aren't getting any juice. Okay, and this one here with the mark that we know is our wire, right now is not getting any juice, right? Zero voltage. All right, go ahead, babe, turn it on to running lights. So you hear the, the tone change and you see it's getting 12.3 volts. That means this wire at this terminal is getting power. All right, headlights on. Now the headlights are on and it's still on. Now go to running lights, still on and then off. That's it. Now this one here, okay, uh, running lights, headlights. You see how this one is on with the headlights, but go to running lights, then it loses power. So we wouldn't want to use this one. That's why this guy right here, your white 
with brown casing is the wire that we're gonna tap into to give us that same exact power result for the RT badge. So just to make sure that the light actually works before we even get any further with installing it, I've got my power probe here, which we're using to obviously find the power source. You've got your positive connected to your positive pole on the battery cable. And here I just grounded it on top of the shock tower, but you know, just grounded to any grounding source in the car. Then on the power probe, I've grounded the ground wire to the ground wire of the power probe. And the power wire with the power probe, you can push your 12 volts through it like that. So I'm gonna to go to positive wire, which we're gonna to use to power the RT light. So now I've got the lead and the power probe touching the lead for the red wire to power it. And there we have it. That's pretty cool. And obviously if you guys don't have a power probe at home, I'd recommend these things, they're freaking awesome, but you could test this a number of other ways. You could probably run um, some spare wire from your battery or any other battery grounding the ground wire and then running 12 volts to it because that's ultimately what this thing's gonna get. But the good news is the RT badge works. And so now we know we're going to go ahead and finish this installation. Okay, and now what I'm doing is taking a razor blade and very carefully cutting back some of the sheathing that's wrapped around these wires so I can better access the white with brown wire. And when we're done, we'll go ahead with electrical tape and wrap this back up, um, make it look nice. We can see our friend right here. It's white with the brown. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can isolate this wire and then have a better place to access splicing in the red connector, which you've seen on the RC badge, which is gonna get our power drawn right from this source. So now let's go around front, mount the badge, feed the wiring through to right here, and then we can actually splice in and connect. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you pop your hood, you're gonna to wanna to get this panel up and out of the way. You don't have to take it all the way off like I did. I was kind of figuring it out as I went and I thought I was gonna to need to remove the headlight, but we don't need to do that. So ultimately, you just need to get pretty much this side of it up so you can get this piece of the panel off. You can see what I did over here on this side. Just had to pop off this one so you can kind of lift up um, on this edge, and then slip this top side of the grill out from underneath it. The same thing over here, and that's because we want to remove the Dodge badge and replace the RT in its place. So to get behind it, you need to create some access to get there. And you can see these little tabs that are holding on the badge. We're gonna to have to remove those and then the badge will be off. And then we can feed the wiring through here and then send it down behind the headlight and tap into where we've got the wire that we're gonna power. It Notice with. though that these little screws, not like the ones in an old school car where you can actually get you know, a socket on there and unscrew them. They're kind of one-time use. They're metal clamps that clasp over these plastic ends. And once they're on there, they're pretty much kind of stuck to each other and you can't really get it off. So you can see it, it's broke the first one. These badges would be pretty inexpensive if we ever wanted to go back to it, but honestly, we're not going to at this point. So the same tool that I used to remove these body clips up top. So I just got right behind it and off comes the badge. Okay, so now we want the badge to live somewhere down in this area. So, don't want it touching down here. Maybe like right there. To do that though, we're gonna feed the wire. I'm gonna go with probably this hole here. And then if we don't like it, we can always readjust it after the fact. Feeding our wires through the honeycomb part of the grill. Then on the back side, I'm gonna have to get this over to that headlight like we talked about. See, and that lands us right there. We have a little bit of room within the honeycomb openings to kind of play with location. And then we can always pick another one if we wanted to go here or there. And if we want to really dramatically change where it is, pull it back out, get the wire adjusted. But I think about there looks pretty good. So I've got this bolt undone on the top of the headlight housings. This way I can fit the wiring underneath it and 
keep it nice and clean in appearance. So we can kind of hide this behind the headlight, along this frame part, along this piece of structure. We can come down here and you guys can see right there is that white harness that we were working on before to cut in on our white and brown wire. So that's where we need this to pretty much go and head to right now. And you can see the wires coming down right where we need it to be. That's perfect. So you now that's nice and neatly tucked away down there. You don't even see it. This cable here that's going across is what goes for your hood latch pull. But that's essentially it. Once again, you've got the badge here. We fed the wire through, up and routed it behind the headlight. Just pop off this with the 10 millimeters. So this way you can get the wire underneath it and along this piece of frame, tuck it down. And then you'll meet up with your little wiring harness, which is right over here. Voila. And once again, very simple, two wires. This guy right here is our ground. So we're gonna find a nice bolt, something that's got a good chassis ground, clean up a little bit of paint if we need to, to get some bare metal and get us our ground. And this one here, it comes with this kind of needle looking connector. Is it the most perfect way of doing it? No, but it's a quick and easy way and it'll honestly work. This needle is sharp enough that it's gonna puncture into the wire that we've identified right there and it's just gonna tap off um, the power going through it. And then this is gonna clamp down, this top will clamp down, and then we can take some electrical tape and uh, try and make it waterproof. And this should work pretty good. So I like the look of this bolt up here, which is going to the body. And then this ties into all the chassis and framework. So I'm gonna pull this guy off, which is a half inch, and we'll tap this area as our source for our ground. Okay, so now we've got this bolt out. And some people will say that you can ground through the threads on stuff. No, I don't trust it. So this area right here where the underside of this washer is contacting the metal, that's really where we're getting our ground. Right in this area on the outside. I'm gonna get some sandpaper and get some bare metal so this way we're guaranteed a really good ground. I'm just being careful not to go beyond the area because we don't want to expose metal that's not gonna be covered up by the bolt and create an area for things to rust. But again, we're looking for some shiny clean metal for really good ground contact. Okay, and now you can see we've got good clean metal for a nice ground. I went ahead and routed the ground wire itself where it comes from behind the harness. So this way it's actually got something holding it up. It's not gonna dangle and get caught on anything. And now we can go ahead and reinstall the bolt, which is gonna capture that ground wire. Okay, nice and snug. Beautiful. That ain't going anywhere. Okay, so now we're grounded and then we can take our positive here and tap in to our faithful white and brown wire. So in order to do this, you have to disconnect the back side of this blue part of the connector and the wire is gonna wind up being exposed like this. But if you didn't take this off, um, you guys will see what I mean. You're gonna not be able to twist you're not going to be able to spin this without it starting to spin the whole wire and it's going to get all twisted and maybe even break the wire. So disconnect the back piece, which is this little one here, which holds the wire into the blue body with this kind of needle part. So now hold this to the side. You can fit this end that has the slot around the wire. And all that's going to do is allow you to fasten down, tap into the wire and it's going to create contact with the copper wire inside of the plastic sheathing. And then once we do this, it's gonna now give this piece here on the back power, which will then get fastened to the actual wiring here and juice it up. And of course, like I said, we don't want, it should be relatively watertight because it's a really tight little connection here, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this all up in electrical tape and make it even better. So with this, I twisted it as tight as I possibly could, which now I'm guaranteeing that it's smushing into that wire. Like I said, driving that needle straight through the plastic sheathing into the copper, and it's gonna send power through this thing. So now we can take our red and actually connect it to the back using um, this little piece of the end, which we took off. So we're gonna feed the red wire through the back side here, 
you can see all those little exposed ends, make sure they all go through. All right now it's sticking out and it's kind of looking a little frayed. You want all of those little ends of that wire to go into the back side here of this raw metal, touching it. Now we're gonna screw this in and this is gonna clamp down the wire and now you should be able to pull and it doesn't come out. Not ultra hard, but decent little pull. Now it's tight and that should be it. This is now tapped in on source to power that light. I'm gonna plug this harness back into the light fixture and go in the car, flip the light switch and see if it works. Plugging it back in, just like that. It's the back side here of the headlight fixture. Now let's go ahead and give it a shot. Should turn on. Yes, we did it. That is so cool. Okay, and like I said, I didn't secure this thing yet, just in the off chance that we didn't get it right. But uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, it looks so cool. Turn our light off, get a real full look at it. Heck yeah, that looks super cool. And like I said, Alex wanted it to be kind of ominous like this, where we could turn on just the accessory lights. So now you can see you've got your lower LED in the headlight and the amber on the outside and the RT showing. And we should hit the headlight button right now and also still see the RC glowing. So now we've got full headlights on. You can hear the LEDs of the headlights and there it is. <laughs> Heck yeah, we did it guys. That is it. So that is your quick down and dirty on how to do this at home. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right guys, and if you made it this far, the final thing we need to do since we like our location where the badge is sitting right now is go ahead and mount the bracket to the rear which is going to lock in these two studs and uh, that pretty much wraps up the job so pop over here into the box and they provided two lock nuts as well as this rear bracket and washers and i'm just going to pull forward carefully on this part of the grill like we've been doing and then you can see right back here those two studs sticking through and that's where we'll fasten our hardware. And just carefully working without breaking our grill here, getting those two little lock nuts tightened up. And that's it. Okay, we just finished tightening up these two lock nuts on the back side of the badge. So now it is here and it is secure. Looks really good. And the last and final thing that I'm going to do is make sure that this wire gets routed neatly, tucked away. We'll get some uh, zip ties and actually tie it up so it's nice and neat. And that's it, that is the job. I think painting the brake calipers red now to match that RT badge is in order. We're gonna have to ask Alex and see if she wants that. Here you guys can see I wrapped up the wire with some electrical tape to make sure we keep moisture and uh, a little debris from getting out of there. And I always use good tape too. Like there's nothing better than some Scotch Super 33. This is kind of the good shit right here. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you guys go ahead and hit subscribe for us and come back for more helpful tips and videos that we've got here with Finelli Restorations. And also we want to be professional about our job. So we went and wrapped down this wiring that was left over from excess with the wires. To clean this up, we put some zip ties and just like that, it is now dressed up clean and neat out of the way, protected, reconnected. There we go. So now we'll get the wheel well covering, put back, put back where it belongs and uh, punch in all of those little snap-in protectors and the fasteners and that's it. This part here is done. We love it. It is so cool. Absolutely, looks so rad.
we did the full install on the Catback Type S Borla exhaust system. As well, we lowered the whole car. We've also got a full how-to video with the Eibach lowering springs. Right now, it's sitting a little bit higher up front because we had the car jacked up. The suspension hasn't resettled, but this whole car was lowered one and a half to two inches all the way around, and we've got both videos up on the YouTube channel as well if you want to check that out. Other ways to modify and customize your Durango. Heck yeah. Here's a look at it during the daytime for you guys as well, just to see what it looks like. Super cool. There's a different size, Alex said. There's a smaller one she could have got, but I'm glad she went with this one. I think it fits the grill perfectly, fills out the front of the car. It just looks ominous and mean, even during the daytime. Imagine that thing coming up in your rear view mirror. It isn't Mopar Mama herself. <laughs>